Hey, welcome everybody. Let's uh, come to a comfortable seat. Um, enjoy a little Daron yoga class today. So, sitting tall in any way that feels comfortable for you. Just try to get the spine as long as you can. If you find that you're in a little bit of a slump asana, by all means, feel free to sit on one of the blocks. And then close your eyes and just arrive. Take a moment to listen to the sound of your breath, to feel the flow of the breath in your body. Notice how your belly feels right now. Apart from the fact that there may or may not be food in it, but just notice if there's any tension and see if you can soften and deepen your exhales to release any tension, whether it's in the belly or anywhere else in the body. Notice your shoulders, your face. And as you inhale, allow energy to come into your body, allow prana to flow in. And allow yourself to grow a bit taller with the breath. As you exhale, maintain this length and just allow everything that doesn't need to work to relax with your exhale. Right? Your shoulders, your jaw, your eyes. And on your next inhale, bringing in the energy again. And try to fill up towards your back as well as your front, your lower back and the space between the shoulder blades. So you're really breathing in like a balloon, using the whole of your lungs. And when you're ready, again, exhale. And then bringing the hands together in front of your heart. And we'll kind of look today a little bit at the yin and yang, at opposites, at balancing. Take a moment to maybe set an intention. What is it that you need to pay attention today to either stay in balance or come to balance? For some of us, it's going a little slower. For some of us, it's not skipping a chaturanga. For some of us, it's simply paying attention to our own practice and not comparing with others. Let's begin with one ohm together. Inhale. Oh. Release the hands, opening the eyes. Good morning, welcome aboard. Let's start right away with some deliciousness. So let's come to the hands and knees. We'll start with this kind of weird cat-cow, right? Take your hips in circles, and as you go in circles, try to go up and down as well as around, right? Kind of like a belly dancer. And if that feels good, even go further into your shoulders and elbows to really create a lot of movement, bringing in that high-quality olive oil to every joint. Go ahead and switch directions if you haven't. If you can. Find your breath, which I know you can. Okay. Come back to neutral. Keep the hips right over the knees, and we're going to walk the hands forward for downward puppy. So slowly start to surrender your head towards the ground. If it by any chance reaches the ground, then that's easy. Bring your chin down. If that's way too easy for you, bring your chest down. If that's way too easy for you, Go home, sign up for Cirque du Soleil. Get stiff and come back. Right. Slowly make your way to Downward Dog. Right. Yoga is for everyone, for the flexible and for the stiff. So many times I hear people telling me, I'm too stiff for yoga. Bending one knee at a time. Going slow, so you really have time to exhale into the straight leg, to feel that stretch. 
breathing through the nose, allowing the breath to pass through the throat, creating a soft sound. Your ujjayi breath, your victorious breath. Good. Rooting down your left heel, take the right leg up to the sky. Reach it way up and then bend the knee, open up the hips. Try to bring your right heel towards the left hip and maybe even take a few ankle rotations if you like. Going in both directions. All right, let's warm up our core. Straighten the right leg behind you. And as you exhale, bring the knee to the nose. Inhale, take it back to the sky. And exhale, bring the right knee across over to the left. Rotate in your hips. Beautiful. Back to the sky. This time, let's bring the right knee over to the right side with the option of bending the elbows. Woohoo! Press it back to the sky. And bring your right foot forward between the hands. Lower the left knee down. We'll go for a low lunge. Right. Bring the hands up to the hips. And find your yin, right? We're going to sink, be heavy, find the earth. And uh, while we're doing that, we're going to also find our yang. We're going to find some energy, breathe into the belly, breathe into the chest, so that there's no collapse into the lower back. Good. Keep the breath going. Try to keep your drishti, your gaze, steady at one point. Not very crucial where, as long as you're focused and present. We'll take another deep breath here. Gorgeous. Let's bring the hands down to the ground. Step the right foot back into planky. So what do you guys think? Are we allowed to drop the knees and plank to the ground? Yes. Absolutely, right? Remember to take care of yourself today. Do what's right for your body. As you're ready, with or without the knees, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, open up into either upward dog or a baby cobra again, whatever is right for you. And exhale into the downward facing dog. Adho Mukhashvanasana. Left leg reaches way up to the sky. Bend the knee, open up the hip. And then maybe again, taking a few ankle rotations because it's so much fun. Great, straightening the left leg behind you. As you exhale, bring the knee forward towards the nose. Use your core. Inhale, back to the sky. Exhale, across, rotate your hips. Inhale, back to the sky. Exhale over towards the left side with the option of bending the elbows and back to the sky. Left foot forward between the hands, right knee down, and finding your low lunging. And allow your front right side to sink. And then again, creating a bit of space for the back. Can you hear the sound of your breath? Beautiful. One more breath. Hands down to the ground. Step it back to plank. Good. Slow motion, lower chaturanga. Finish your exhale and then inhale. Open up. Exhale, downward facing loveliness. Good. Take a breath or two. Beautiful. Good. Look between the hands. Let's step the right foot forward. We're not going to jump. We're going to take the worm up to shortcut. And before we come up to a high lunge, I think it's a good thing to dance. You guys ready for some dancing? Press the back leg super strong, right? Reach the chest and head forward. Find if you can lift your hands. If you can, test yourself. Keep the gaze steady and try to go dancing a bit. wee -ha! Good. Keep the hips low. Reach your arms forward. Try to keep the hips exactly as they are as you lift up to your high lunge. Good. The arms can be apart if it's tight on your shoulders. Try to imagine yourself wrapping the shoulders in like you're scooping some nice big scoop of, I don't know which flavor ice cream you like, whatever you prefer. Last few breaths, let's bend the back knee. Tuck the tailbone a little under. Use your core, activate your bandhas here, and then try to keep that Banda activation, as you stretch a little bit more the back leg, you may start to feel your psoas. Hello, good morning. Hands down to the ground, step it back. As you exhale, lower chaturanga. Stay, finish the exhale, then find an inhale. And exhale, downward dog. 
Good. Try to maintain breathing through the nose as much as you can. Smooth, even, long, deep breaths. Left foot forward. Good. Powerful back right leg, right? Using your bandhas, find freedom in your arms, and let's go dancing. Yiba. And one, two, three, shoot energy forward, as well as your back leg. Keep the hips low. Inhale, open up. Gorgeous. Good. Nice. Here we go, bending the back leg a little bit. Tucking it a little bit. Yes. And then try to maintain that as you straighten. Yes, gorgeous. Straighten a bit in the back leg. Ooh, yeah. Good. Staying focused. Another deep breath here. Gorgeous. Hands down to the ground. Step it back through your vinyasa. Exhale down. Inhale. Happy face. Exhale. Down dog. Okay. Take a couple of breaths here. Hmm. Beautiful. Look between the hands. Either step or jump your feet forward to the front. Lengthen the spine and exhale. Drop, surrender. Lower down. Good. Inhale. Come all the way up. Take the arms over the head. Look up. See your hands. And exhale in slow motion. Come back to the heart. Good. Lots of awareness. Inhale. Arms up overhead. Exhale. Slowly forward, forward. Inhale. Lengthen halfway up. Good. Keep the gaze forward. Bend the knees. You're welcome to either step or jump back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Good. As you open up, try to maintain that softness in the face. Exhale, down dog. Take a few breaths, right? Surya Namaskar A, San Salute A. Good. Notice that your bandhas are working, right? Your belly is slightly lifted in and up. Your hips, very pita, really fiery, wanting to reach back and up. Mm. Towards the end of your exhale, look between the hands. Step or float forward. Lengthen right with your landing halfway up. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Good. Shortcut to Surya B, bend the knees, Utkatasana. Mistakenly known as chair pose, really fierce pose, or how do we like to call this one? Happiness pose. God. Oh my God, you guys all look so fantastic. You want to stay here for another 20, 30 minutes? Sit a little deeper. Open your heart. Just one more breath. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, step or jump back. Lower to your chaturanga. Good. Inhale, really open up. Shine, shine, shine. Happy faces. Exhale, downward dog. Nice. Right foot forward, left heel down, right? Same thing, reach the chest forward, try to bring the arms forward. If it's too much on your back, hands to the heart as you come up. It's okay, it'll be a little less, up to warrior one. And then sink a little deeper, find the energy in the arms, take a deep breath. Follow your hands so you're very focused as they come back to the chest. We're going for twist delicious, twisting over to the right side, great. So we're gonna stay up for this twist. We'll go later into deeper ones, just to warm up the spine a bit. Good. Keep breathing, everyone, please. Here we go. Back to warrior one. And exhale, hands to the ground. Step it back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Good. Breathing as you go down. And downward doggy. Good. Good news. Let's do the left side. Left foot forward, right heel down. Again, reach the arms, focus your gaze as you come up. Good, lots of presence. Take a breath here. Feel the power of your warrior. And yet find the softness in your face and breath. The balance of yin and yang. Hands to the heart, slow and steady. Keep the spine tall as you twist over to the left side. And then use your breath. As you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, dive a little deeper into your twist. Breathing. Nice, slow motion, steady, back to warrior one. 
Good. Keep watching your hands as they come to the ground. Step it back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flowing through your vinyasa. Finding inhale. Nice. I heard that. That was awesome. And exhale. Good. Beautiful. Take a breath or two here. Take a breath or two. Look between the hands. Step or float forward. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Let the head completely relax down. Good. Bending the knees. Let's find some joyfulness. All right, so the reason this pose became happiness because this was one of my least favorite poses. Anytime in life you find something you don't really like, try playing tricks on your mind and imagining that you actually love it. And see, sometimes it takes a little while, but it sometimes works. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, again, lengthening. So really try to keep the gaze forward. Maybe even come up to your tippy toes. Shift a lot of weight forward. Try to go back a little lighter. And then after you finish the exhale, find your inhale to shine, to open. Exhale back, downward dog. The right foot comes forward, left heel down, slow and steady up to Virabhadrasana, warrior one. Mm, good. Right arm underneath the left. Good. Sink a little deeper. Lift the belly, lift the chest. Take the elbows up and back. Gentle on your back, but do give yourself some love in back bending here. Good. Keep breathing. I know it can get very intense, this pose. Good. Back up to the warrior. Arms up. And let's go for some hippolicious. Watch the hands in slow motion as they come to the inside of the right foot. Left knee comes down to the ground. For some of us, this is enough. If there's any room further, try to keep the foot forward than your right knee. Maybe open to the side, very optional. Very optional, lower down to a block or all the way down to the ground. Okay. And then, just for today, I know I always say relax in this pose. See if you can keep just a hint of length in the spine, softness in your fingertips. Even if you're on your forearms, you can still, that's great. And then softening your face. And for three or four more breaths, just finding as much softness and surrender as possible. Really, do nothing, just surrender. Yeah. Last deep breath here. So exit options, many, right? Bring the foot back, the right foot on the ground. Left knee comes a little closer and forward. The right arm goes underneath the right leg for airplane pose, chest forward, arms up. If that's working for you today, if not, just work on it. If it is, bring the left knee off the ground. For those of you that have ninja practices, by all means, go ahead, take the arm balance. Right, shift forward for Ekapada Kundinyasa. Take a couple of breaths here. Try to lift the back leg as high as you can up towards the sky so you can join the other leg and land eventually in Chaturanga. Woohoo! Good. Follow your breath. We'll meet in downward dog. However way you get there is fine. Flying, crawling, everything is accepted. Everything is good. Good. What's the good news? We do have another side. Are you ready? Let's do it. Left foot. Slow and steady. Coming up, warrior one. Right heel down, good. We'll start with the shoulder back stretch. So left arm underneath the right. Sink a little deeper. Lift the belly and chest, arm up. Good. Call this one Surya B3. Don't forget to breathe. I know it's intense back bend. One last deep breath. And then back up, warrior one. And in slow motion, very present as you bring the hands down to the ground, to the inside of the left foot, right knee down, right? So I tend to move my right knee further back and then find what feels right for you. Lower down to the place that is juicy, but not so spicy that you're going to break. And that's part of the balance, right? Finding where is it that you actually do feel a stretch. You're getting work done, but you didn't push yourself to 100%. Mm. 
Mm, and then deepen your exhales. Allow everything to soften, to relax, to release as you stay in slightly more yin position. Notice where your mind is. Try to stay present. Last two breaths. Good job. Here we go. Slowly come up to your hands. <clears throat> left foot on the ground. Right knee comes float forward. Left arm under. Chest moves forward. Airplane or airplane with the back knee off the ground. If all this feels good, just put the hands down. Move the left foot out of the way. Lower your hips down onto the right elbow. Shift your weight forward to balance and breathe. Good. And breathe. And breathe. And then start to take your back leg high up to fly back. Good. Awesome. Don't worry. It's almost over. It's almost over. I'm lying. At least the warm-ups are almost over. All right. Take a breath or two here. Okay, how about we do this? If you want to hang out here, this is a great place to stay for the next five, six breaths or even take child's pose. If you feel like, yeah, I got some energy still going, look between the hands, step or jump forward. We'll meet in Down Dog soon, don't worry. All are good options. Exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees into happiness, into Utkatasana. Good, open the heart. Take a moment here. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, creating length. Exhale, step, jump back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Good. Open slow, steady, chest forward. And exhale, downward facing doggy. Good. Right foot forward, coming up, warrior one. Slow and steady. Reach up, reach up. Good. Good. Focus on your right hand. Keep yourself super focused as you open in slow motion, warrior two. Nice. Keep the front knee bending. Feel that power in your arms. And then see if you can find some softness in the shoulders, right? It's like we're practicing on water. Right? Like we could stay here for about 17 hours if we needed to. Surprisingly enough, you probably could stay for at least half an hour because you would use energy, not your muscles. Right palm up. Reverse the warrior. Beautiful. Keep your breath alive. Make sure you keep that slightly tucked belly, right? It creates a really cutesy buttocks when we don't do it, but in this case, better safe. Mm. Great. Let's straighten the front leg. Come forward to Trikonasana, triangle pose. Reaching way forward. Wherever the hand comes down is fine. Left arm up. If it's okay with your neck, look up. Right? Again, remember the ribs in. The other way. Good. Wrap the left arm behind the back. Maybe it's tucking in towards the inner thigh. You're welcome to stay here if you want, um, or come balance in half moon, careful of the bar. You can use a block if you like. Once you're steady and you've got your back leg powerfully strong, consider bringing the right hand up to your heart. Really very, very, very optional. By all means, no need to do it. Good, gorgeous everybody. And then slowly floating back, warrior two. Oh my God. Mwah. Hands to the ground. Chaturanga Dandasana. That was gorgeous. Gorgeous. Inhale, shine, open, open. Ooh, nice soft faces. Thank you for that. Downward facing dogginess. Take a breath so we can do the second side really nice and zen like. When you're ready, left foot forward, coming up to your warrior. Slow and steady, reach up. Good. Look at your left hand. Take a moment before you open Warrior Two. Let's all take an inhale and with an exhale, slowly start to open Warrior Two. Good. Keep the gaze at the front hand. Really stay focused. Good. And again, finding that power, which looks like you all have, and a bit of softness in the shoulders. Beautiful. Really, really nice, everybody. Yeah. I was going to tell you to check your body, but you all have perfect poses, so what can we do here? Mm -hmm. right. A reverse. Okay. So if you want to get nicer thighs, yep, you got me, huh? 
bend the front knee. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Good job. And one last deep breath here. Straightening the front leg, reaching forward, trikonasana, triangle pose. Good. So starting with left arm forward and down. Beautiful. Consider wrapping the right arm behind the back. Gorgeous. And if you want to take the gaze down, absolutely you're welcome to do that. Just try not to collapse your shoulders as we move forward to half moon. Ardha Chandrasana. Good. <laughs> Good. Keep the back leg strong and active. Keep your bandhas working. Good. Optional. Left arm up or not. Good. Floating far back into warrior two. Hands to the ground. Step it back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale, 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 exhale. Then inhale. Really fill it up. And exhale back, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Nice. Take another breath. Oh, wow. We're all done with the warm up. So let's rest in a forward fold. Look between the hands. Step or jump forward. Lengthen the spine halfway up. Take the feet about hip width apart. And then forward fold, any forward fold that you like, right? Sometimes I just love to hold the elbows and let everything surrender down. If you need to bend the knees a bit, if it's too intense, do that. If you prefer Ashtanga variations of holding toes or standing on feet, that's fine too. I really consider this as a complete surrender pose in the sense that you're doing a little bit of work, but you're really surrendering your mind. Imagine that your head is opening up, your fontanella, and you're allowing all old useless conditioning and thoughts just to come down to the earth. Consider those old ones as compost. Right? Let it enrich some other ideas of people. Just free yourself from it. Release the hands from wherever you have them. And then inhale, come halfway up. Bring the hands to the hips, exhale here. Inhale all the way up. Samastitihi. Nicey. Um, let's all open to the right foot to the right side. So open the right foot, right side. Feet are parallel to each other. We'll do both C and A today. So we'll start with Prasarita C. Clasping the hands behind the back. Or if your shoulders are a bit tight today, use a strap. And take the feet even a little wider. Inhale, creating length. And as you exhale, slowly coming down, let the head come down, let the arms come over the head. Mm, perfect, beautiful. And take it even a little wider. There you go. Let it drop. Good. How are your shoulders? Okay. Gonna go a little more? Let's see how it feels. Is that okay? Another three breaths. The legs are strong, everything else is relaxing. Good. Use your core to come all the way up. Good. Inhale. Good. Release the hands. Bring them to your hips. Let's go for A with optional variations. Inhale. Create length. And exhale. Slowly coming down. Bring the hands between the feet if possible. Inhale. Lengthen one more time. And exhale. Head down towards the earth. Okay. So some of us have already done the C and come up to tripod headstand. Feel free. Shushasana B. If that's not your practice today and you want to stay here and stretch, stay here and stretch. All, right? All practices are good. If you come up and you come up and do crazy variations, like go down to crow, good. Otherwise, stay. Good. Wherever you are, make sure you're breathing. Perfect. And then head down. If you're in crow or variations of crow, legs back up to the sky. And eventually we'll meet all with heads, with heads, legs back on the ground. Good job. Okay. Inhale, let's all lengthen halfway up. Bring the hands to the hips. 
and then inhale again all the way up. Okay, turn your left foot towards the front, take your gaze towards the front. Try to think of bringing the hips over the foot, uh, front, not the back leg. So we're going to come forward, Nadja Komanechi style, nice and steady. Not too bad. Let's do it again on the other side. So bring the left foot back, right? Really focus. And as you're bringing the back foot, right, don't think of stepping the foot forward, but think of first bringing the hips over your standing leg. Once your hips are forward, right, you can do anything on one leg. Ah, brush your teeth. So let's step the left foot forward nice and steady. Mm, gorgeous and release. Okay, we'll practice that one more time by taking the right foot back, a little less distance, Parshvutanasana. Hips come forward, either reverse namaste if available. If it's not available, feel free to take holding the elbows. That's fine too. Inhale, creating space and length. And exhale slowly as you come forward. Try to think of your hips moving slightly back as your chest and head move forward. Right. Nice. This one has never been easy for me to get those hips perfectly straight. Right. Make sure your front leg is straight, but don't lock the knee, right? Keep a micro bend so that you keep that knee protected. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, you guys are real masters. Love it. Okay, inhale, slowly come all the way back up. Good. Let's slowly step the back foot forward. Gorgeous. And then step the left foot back. Readjust the hips as square as possible. If you need to turn the back toes slightly in, take your hands if you release them, creating space and length. And then slow and steady coming into the pose. And it's okay if one side feels a little stiffer than the others. There's just a good chance that you're human. Right? And then... I love the mantra here. If your head starts spinning and you start complaining about your hamstrings, consider chanting the gorgeous mantra that goes like this. I love you hamstrings. I love you hamstrings, right? Mm. Slow and steady coming up. Okay. Okay. Stepping it forward. And release. Good. Okay. Shake it away. Time for a break. Let's go have some cappuccinos. Okay, so we're gonna go, let me show you. I'll show you really quick. I know a lot of you know this, but just in case you don't know this, here we go. So we're gonna have about 627 options. Option one will be to stay up here and balance on one leg. Option two will be to start lowering down. Option three coming as far down as feels comfortable, just remembering to move the hips back and not forward onto the knee possibly even flexing the foot to protect the bent knee that's in the air. Both of them are in the air. Option 600 and what was it? 27. Hands down, coming knee into the armpit, other foot as high as possible, preparing for Galavasana, staying here or shifting weight forward, lifting back foot up. Very, very optional. Lifting the hips a bit higher, chest a little forward to come up fully. Right? And try not to open the hips to the side, but rather keep them um, parallel to the ground. And then we're going to release it nice and steady. Right? Remember that staying up here is any option is good, right? Do what's right for you today. Whenever you're ready, right leg up over the left knee and starting to lower back and down, back and down. It's not possible to go really far back, but try not to just go all forward. Take a breath here, enjoy your hip aliciousness, and then either stay or go play. Totally your choice, totally fine either way. Right, staying present. Who needs a little spotting? Good, good, good. Slowly coming out of the arm balance if you're in it. Let's all try to come up slow and steady with control. As if you're in no hurry, release the legs slow. Nice, nice. Mwah. Good news. Okay, let's do the second side. Okay. Left, starting to lower down. Good, keeping the hips low, keeping the chest open, relaxing the shoulders. Enjoy the stretch for a couple of breaths. Nice breathing, thank you. 
Good. Either staying here or hands down, take your arm balance. Ready, coming out of the arm balance and try to come out of the pose slow and steady with control. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Beautiful. Time to go down to the ground. Okay, so take your feet a little bit apart. Let's find some high heels. Lift up your heels, tuck your belly. Right? Is that what you got to do when you wear high heels? I don't know. <laughs> I really feel, every time I teach this, I feel like I should try it because I have no idea what it feels like. Slowly, we're going to start to lower down, okay? So again, hips back. Just keep the hands at the heart. I know cappuccino was not the healthiest thing, so you're welcome to take some rooibos tea, caffeine-free, right? Nice and good for you. Good. Two options. For those of you that are like, dude, you're crazy, well, welcome to the club. Lower down, enjoy a little bit of malasana, and just stretch your hips. For those of you that are wanting to play some more, place the hands down and rest on your arms. Shift your weight, take crow pose. Totally optional. We're doing quite a few arm balances today, so not a must. Just for a quick three. All right, in order to shoot back, try to think of your hips going up, 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 up. Chaturanga. Yippee! Inhale. And then right away, find a nice slow exhale into downward dog. See if you can find center again. Mm. Good. Okay. A tiny, tiny bit more work that will involve somewhat of core. This is actually the first pose of the third series. It's called differently. We'll call it Vaishistasana. So come up to the right hand side plank on the right hand. And remember, there's options of keeping the back foot on the ground, the right knee on the ground. Really awesome options. Left arm up, also optional. Left foot in tree, left foot in the air. Or crazy people, hold your big toe with your left foot. Whee! And breathe for three. Try to tuck the hips slightly in. Try to lift the hips a bit. Two. Nice. One. Chaturanga rest, huh? Isn't Chaturanga restful after this? Inhale. Exhale. Whoever said vinyasa. Take a breath before we go to the second side. Okay. Here we go. Good news. There's only one more side. When you're ready, left side. Okay. All right. Breathing. I forgot to mention, but if it really kills anybody's wrist for future, you can always do this on your forearm. Take any variation that works for you. Good. Good. Either chaturanga or just go to down dog. You don't have to do a chaturanga after this. Good. Take a couple of breaths. I think it's time for some shavasana. Let's come forward to planky. By all means, feel free to lower your knees down to the ground. We're going to come onto the belly. So in slow motion, try to go slow and steady. Exhale, exhale. Once you reach all the way down, you get two whole breaths in Shavasana. So take a big inhale. And take a really slow exhale. So this will be a long Shavasana. And another breath. Right? Two breaths can be magical. That was just two. Here we go. Let's move on. Let's wake up into Shalabhasana. Close to Shavasana, but not quite. So we're going to bring the feet, if possible, together, or at least closer. Start to lift the chest, shoulders back. Start to lift the legs, easy on the back. Right? So I found that I move slightly more towards the belly, so it doesn't hurt. If you like the variation of clasping the hands, by all means, go ahead. And make sure your forehead is still relaxed. Good. Nice, everybody. One more big breath. Lift up and release down. Move your hips a bit from side to side. Give yourself a little moment of break here. Good job. Okay. Let's do some quadalicious today. Okay. So. 
shoulders next week. Right hand, right forearm parallel to the front of the mat. Ardha Bekasana, half frog, bending the left foot, left knee, reach back for the left, start to bring it forward. If for some odd reason it comes quite a lot forward, really it doesn't have to, turn the fingers forward, rotate in the elbow, and start working it to come down. Right? As this starts to work coming down, it's almost like my foot presses up in order to have my hand win and take it down. Right? If it's easy, try to bring both shoulders facing forward. Breathe here. Good. The only thing you want to be careful of is not to turn the foot sideways, right? That can go into your knee. Good. Before we switch to the second side, if, does anybody do the both sides? All right. Okay, never mind. Next week. Bring switch sides. Let's all switch sides. If you do do both sides, feel free to just take a few breaths here and then take both. Happy there? Or do you want to go for... Okay, let's, let's see how it goes. Perfect. Just breathe. Three, two, one. Slipping. Yeah, I should have given you my knees there. Good. Everybody, slowly release. Take one breath here, and our last belly pose, pose on the belly, it's not a belly pose, bending the knees. We're going to go for Danyurasana, the bow pose. All right, so either take hold of the feet, if you can, reach down towards your ankles, and start by really like trying to lift a bit in the chest, but then really work today on lifting more in the legs. All right, so it's almost like you're staying a bit more on the belly today. And for those that it's reasonable, bring your feet slightly closer together, Back, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? I'm breathing. Three, two, one. Shavasana on the belly. Mm. Just press it back into a wide knee child's pose. How about that? We'll give ourselves a little break here. Sink the hips down. Just let yourself be heavy. Feel the forehead grounding you into the earth, right? Part of balancing this yin and yang is after we do something a bit more intense, always good to take just a moment to come back into presence, into ground, into earth. But then we don't want to become too heavy, otherwise I'll have to bring you TV and potato chips. Let's make our way, your choice, downward dog or chaturanga up dog, down dog. Whatever your body is saying, that'll make me happy. Nice. Take a breath here. Okay. So since we just had some rest, let's do one more ninja work and then we'll go back bends and forward folds. So lower down to your knees for a moment. I would say, let's all, does everybody have a block? Can I borrow one? Take a block for a quick moment. Just if you're not, I'll get you one. Anybody needs one? Oh, looks like you're all getting one. That's great. Okay, so just as preparation for either dolphin or pincha, we'll do this, even if you know it, just for fun. Hold the block like so, right? And then here comes the elbow squeeze. Bring them to shoulder width. Okay, now I've got a valley between my hold, shoulder blades. I'm going to press forward. By pressing forward, you should feel like you've got a little mountain between the shoulder blades, right? This is what you want to feel. This is your support in either the dolphin or the pinchamayurasana. Okay, so, and then just this, and at the same time, see if while you're doing this, your head and neck can stay pretty chill and relax. Okay, bring this down to the ground, or maybe watch for a moment. I'll show you again the 796 options. All right, so option one, this is it. Just work your shoulders here. Oof, good work. Option two, Downward doggy, which is really dolphin I don't know, does this look like a dolphin? With the option of walking the feet forward. The more you walk forward and come up onto the finger, under the tippy toes, the more you'll find yourself 
burning in the shoulders, which is awesome, right? Just don't collapse, keep this working. Option 289, one leg up, and option 600, shift the weight forward, hips over the shoulders, lift the both legs. And then if you play here and either take the back bend, the scorpion, or the lotus, feel free. Otherwise, choose one of the options, but do something. I'll come around and try to spot you, or some of you. Good to remember, no matter what you do, just to shift the hips, press the elbows, keep the belly lifted, head is off the ground, head is looking slightly forward towards the block. Anybody else wants a spot and didn't get one? Yeah? Perfect. Look forward. Breathe. Three, two, and let's all meet in child's pose. Or if you're still practicing, you can practice, but if not, take child's pose. Again, allow yourself to surrender, finding that Yin, balance after the yang. Take just one more very deep exhale. And then remove your blocks and we'll make our way into downward doggy. And then just step, walk, or jump through to your seat, whatever works for you. So we said after work, we got to relax a bit. So we'll just take a very, very short trip to Guatemala. You know, that's where I'm building. And one thing about Guatemala is there's hammocks everywhere. So we don't have hammocks here. We'll do some sustainable hammocks, right? The hammocks that don't involve trees. Left up. It's usually called boat pose in literal translation. But legs up. Feel free to hold behind the legs. If it's easy enough, arms forward. If you can still stretch your lips, take the legs up, right? No need to straighten the legs if it's too much. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed, right? Your head and neck, right, free. Let the core do the work. Lower halfway down. Good. Pretend like you're enjoying this, please. That's much better, people. Love it. Good. Here comes the fun, hard part. Try to lower. Your shoulder blades are almost touching the ground. Tuck the tailbone under, keep the legs up for a moment, and just for the next five breaths, crisscross the legs. Five, uh, what, caprinias? No, you guys don't drink, right? Four. Breathe, stay calm. Three. Try to stay very yogi. Two. One. Half. Quarter. Okay, enough. Shavasana. Mm, bring the knees to the chest. Give yourself a biggie huggy. Mm. Close your eyes for a moment and ask yourself, do I love me? Do you really love yourself? Compassionately, not arrogantly, right? What is it that's maybe holding you back from feeling free to dance in the middle of the street? to be yourself or whoever you are. Can you really allow yourself, just for the next few moments, to just be yourself? And can you maybe even set the intention to more and more have the courage to have your own voice, your own actions, be a renegade. Who cares what other people think, as long as you're not hurting them. So we're going to go into a few back bends, and the more we feel that freedom, the easier it is to open up the hips, the heart, right, that emotional space. So I'm going to invite you, we'll do it Mysore style. You can do one of a few variations. You can come up into Setu Bandhasana, prep right into the bridge pose. If you have the full Urdhva Dhanurasana, go for that. Whatever is right for you. I'd say come up for a good five breaths at least, and then... Either 
stay, come down for a couple of breaths, come up, or if it feels good for you to stay a little longer, stay a little longer. If anybody needs ankles, call me over. Good. Make sure your feet are somewhat parallel, knees moving in. Gorgeous. Really nice. It's really a bummer that you're all so good and I have nobody to help here. <sighs> Take the heels out to the side. I'm going to have to quit teaching. Okay. Beautiful. Neck okay? Okay. Try to bring the elbows, the hands a little closer, clasp it so you take the shoulders a bit under. Perfect. Good. At this point, I would probably take a break. We'll do one more after this. So slowly lower down. Just move your knees from side to side, like windshield wipers. Release a bit in your back. Good. And we will do one more, right? I had a teacher, I have a teacher, he says it's like pancakes. The first one doesn't even count. <laughs> so as you're ready, let's come up one more time. Whatever variation works for you is good. Good. And as you come up, imagine that you're bringing the tailbone more towards the heels, the chest more towards the chin to create a little more space in the lower back. You got it. Good. Good. Nice. Keep breathing. Can you lower the heels down? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, perfect. Slowly come down when you're ready. All right. So for me, back bends are sometimes a bit intense. And so whenever things get intense in my life, and I start to take myself very seriously, I remind myself that everything passes, right? Everything is in transition. Even what we imagine to be the most steady, stable thing is constantly moving and shifting, like our bellies when we laugh like maniacs. Are you guys ready for some happy baby? Okay, here we go. Take your feet, roll a bit from side to side, and let it roll! Just see if you can love yourself a little more this time. <laughs> oh. mm, I really, I was going to say love yourself like your mother. <laughs> Some people don't have that. Love yourself really compassionately, accepting. Okay, let's go a little chill out. So place the feet on the ground, move the hips over to the right side. We're going to go for twist delicious. The knees can go over to the left. For those that want a little juicier, wrap in eagle legs, go over to the left. Maybe left hand on the legs. Gaze goes over to the right. If you have a different variation that works for you here, that's great. All right. Good. Soften and deepen the breath. Deepening the exhales helps activate the parasympathetic system. Last few. Mm 
and trying to make the transition slow and steady, right? noticing the movement of your legs as you come up, shifting the hips to the other side first before you take the legs, right? Hips go to the left as the legs go to the right. Mm -hmm. Gaze goes to the opposite direction of the legs. Last couple of breaths, notice where your mind is. See if you can find that sattvic, that really blissful space of being. As we move away from extra yang to slightly finding yin, slowly come out and out of the pose, bring the knees to the chest. We'll keep it balanced. We won't let you be too yin so you could still function after class. Rolling back and forth, coming up to sit. <coughs> Good. If you really want to take a vinyasa, by all means, go take a vinyasa. If you don't want to take a vinyasa, go ahead, take a vinyasa. <laughs> yeah, you can choose. You can take a vinyasa or you can take a vinyasa. Both options are great. Right. Yeah. We will come back to our seat. So come forward to the front of your mat. Take your seat. Let's go for a moment of Baddha Konasana. Right, feet together, knees to the side. Remember, if you end up being in slampa konasana or slampasana, really sit on a block or a blanket. You want to get that pelvic tilt forward. Open up your feet. It's okay if summer gets them a bit dirty. Lengthen the spine, and if there's room, forward fold. If you find that you're kind of already forward fold and you don't want to hold the feet, that's fine too. You're welcome to bring forearms forward. <coughs> Slightly using the inhale to create a bit of length and the exhales to surrender deeper into the pose. Good. Slowly make your way back up. Take your legs wide apart. Upavishta Konasana. <coughs> Good. Same thing. If you find yourself tilting in this one, sometimes it's just helpful to have the hands behind the back. If you have a forward fold here, by all means come forward. All right. Try to keep the feet up to the sky. And if available, lowering down to forearms. If available, coming down. But just really, the pelvic tilt is the most important part. So, it wasn't that long ago where I was with the hands behind the back. My secret to getting out of that was to lay down on the back, legs up on the wall, legs wide for a good 15, 20 minutes. You can practice breathing, meditation, read a book. But it's really it's just like that complete staying in the pose for longer and this one was just never easy. And then a month later, it was like magic. Suddenly, it just really opened. Okay, last couple of breaths here. <coughs> Great. So just for fun, 
and so we don't fall asleep because I was going to go through more forward folds. Let's balance. Right? So bring the belly in. You can completely do this with feet, with knees bent. That's totally okay. If you can, straighten the legs. What's more important, straightening the legs or straightening the back? I uh, love you guys. All right, so, yeah, try to relax the shoulders, lift in the belly. Again, this is perfectly good. That's awesome, awesome. Straightening completely optional. Good. So the exit from Upavishta Konasana, unfortunately, is another chaturanga. So let's do it, right? Who's excited for another chaturanga? Plant the hands, lift up, step, float, jump, walk back. Inhale, shine, yummy. Exhale, downward doggy. Okay, a few more forward folds. Step or jump through to your seat. Good. So we'll take the left leg forward. Take the right foot to the inside of the left leg. We're going to take a Janusur Shasana A. For those of you that want to go for the Ardha Padmasana, the half lotus, feel free. You want to do it with the, with the bind as well. That's K2. Right, whatever, whatever really feels good for your body today. When you're ready, go ahead. Lengthen and forward fold. Inhale slowly up, let's switch sides. <coughs> Good, lengthening. Bring this a little back. Slowly coming back up. <coughs> Take both legs forward in front of you for Pashimottanasana. Okay. Again, if you need to and you're like, I won't use a block, feel free to bend the knees if that feels better. When you're ready, lengthen and coming forward into the pose. Right, making sure you're using your bandhas here as you relax the rest of your body. All right. How's your back here? No pain? Slowly, slowly coming up. So we're going to go for shoulder standing. So if somebody's just today like, uh, I'm not going upside down, not feeling right, cycle, whatever it may be, right? Men are allowed to be on their cycle too. Um, go ahead and just take legs up the wall or take a block stand. The rest of us are going to go into shoulder stand, but if you're like, oh my God, really no headstand, go ahead, do headstand, that's okay. We did tripod, but if you rather do that, you can. Otherwise, let's all go into shoulder stand. <coughs> if your neck is hurting you here, call me over. I'll make sure to help you with blankets or, sorry. Perfect. Okay. 
Just try to keep your gaze, which you all have, very steady. All right, it's almost like a mini meditation here. Keeping the breath still flowing. Last breath here. Slow motion, start to take the legs over the head. If you're in headstand and you need to come down, take child's pose. If you have energy, either stay up or take halfway down. Good, if your legs are all the way on the ground behind you in halasana and plow and they're straight, untuck the toes, careful on the pedicure, but you're welcome to go and give it a little more work. If you're in half headstand, feel free to come back up or all the way down. Everybody else bend the knees towards the ears, Karnapidasana. And then using the hands on the ground to control your descent, slowly starting to roll all the way back down to the mat. We're going to make our way into Variations of fish pose, right? Matsyasana, Tanapadasana. So propping once you're down onto the elbows, lifting up the chest. If you were in short headstand, you can join us whenever you want, right? Really lifting the chest. Head is on the ground. If the head doesn't reach the ground, walk the elbows slightly forward towards the feet. If you want to take crazy variations, feel free to lift the legs up 30 degrees or so, 45, beautiful. Maybe even the arms go up towards the feet. Woo-ha. Good. Hips are on the ground. You got it. So move your elbows a little more this way until the head touches the ground. A little more. There you go. You go a little more further. There you go. Slowly release down. Bring the knees to the chest. Give yourself a nice, juicy, huggy, loving, huggy, muggy, wuggy, mm-hmm. I love myself. Right, you do? <laughs> I hope you do. If you really love yourself, now this is the biggest test. Let yourself die. Okay? <laughs> Shavasana. And this time I'm not even kidding. Okay? So giving yourself permission to momentarily die, right? Don't worry, we're all going to be resurrected in a little bit. This permission is the permission of full freedom. It's the permission to really be completely, completely okay with everything that's happening in your life because you're okay with the worst case scenario, okay? Make sure if there's any last little bit of tension, breathe and exhale to it and then don't even worry about your breathing, don't even worry about anything whatsoever. If you're feeling your lower back a bit intense and you'd like a bolster underneath your knees, just bring the knees up, feet on the ground and I'll bring you a bolster.
Take a deep breath in. <coughs> and for a moment, just notice the breath through the nostrils. And see if you feel that maybe it's a little easier to breathe through one side compared to the other, through one nostril. And if you found that, then just bring your knees up and roll onto the side that's easier to breathe through, to the more open nostril. Just lie on that side for a few breaths. Nostrils are related to the opposite side of the brain, to the sun, the moon, the yin, the yang. And when we roll onto the side that was easier to breathe through, we're allowing the other side to have a bit more of an opportunity to open up, to help us come back to balance. And trying to make your way back up to sit slow and consciously. Either connecting again with the intention you set at the beginning of class, something that you may or may not need to do to come to balance. Maybe it's a new intention, right? What throws you out of balance during this week? For some of us, it's a repetitive something that happens during the day or a special encounter with somebody that happens once or twice a week. Try to see if you can actually envision yourself within those tough moments, maybe even choose one tough moment during the week and envision yourself acting, behaving in your ideal way. And maybe it's a bit different than you normally do. Planting the seed for change. Bring the hands to the heart. So for those of you that know, you'll join me. We'll chant Om Loka Samasta Suki No Bhavantu, Om Shanti 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 Om. We'll do it in slow motion. If you don't know the chant, you can always start with the Om and finish with us with the Om. And have that intention inside of you to share the blessing, to share the love, so that every being everywhere is happy and free. So the love is abundant for everyone. Inhale. Oh. Thank you all so, so much. Yay. Wow, beautiful practice. So good to be back with family, really. It's like, mm, especially the chant at the end. I miss that so much. It's so great that you guys know it. So, yeah, thank you so much. Really love you and appreciate you being here and practicing. Yeah. 
And for those of you that have missed any of my recent workshops or my recent whatever, then you haven't maybe, you've probably heard, but I've got a book come out. And uh, if you want it, there's five of them here. If anybody doesn't have one and wants one, feel free to pick one up. It's $20. You could probably get it a couple of dollars less on Amazon. So if you want to save, go there. But this money goes straight to the yoga center in Guatemala, which hopefully next time you see me, well, I'll probably be back here next summer again, but sooner or later, come over to Guatemala. It's going to be awesome, I promise. I'm putting a lot of sweat in it and it's great. It's really fun. It'll be kind of this, right? Combo of Zen and yoga and art and lots of education programs that are working to do with the local community there. So, yeah, it'll be fun. And if you still haven't done a training with me, are you kidding? Then come over for a month. Some of you have, I know. Come over for a month in Nepal. It's going to be one of the best experiences of your life. I know some of you have kids and husbands and stuff, right? But, but if it works out, just so you know, that's, that's an option. And then there's a week of uh, just a week. That's a little more reasonable of a, tr of a retreat. <clears throat> and that's happening in, uh, in October 8th to the 14th. And we'll just be at the same monastery with some meditation day hikes out to sacred caves and singing bowl workshop and a lot of other goodies. That'll be fun. So come along if you can. Thank you. And for the few of you that don't know me, check out Doron Yoga, either the website or on Facebook. Lots of goodies. Lots of videos, lots of lots of other goodies, lots of information and where else I teach.